So this morning, let's talk a little bit about energy. Um, previous notes, I talked about work and energy, introducing the idea that energy is the property or condition um, that allows an object or a system to do work. Um, talked about it being a noun, compared it to the money. Um, it's like how much money you have. Work is the process of spending that money or buying something. Um, and then before I talk a little bit more about um, work, I want to talk a little bit more about energy now. Now, kind of remember, since work and energy are, are, are almost one and the same, they have the same units, joules. And I want to go back to this property or condition. Energy is its kind of like color. It's kind of like odor. It's just a property that matter has. It's, it's stored up in that property. OK, the, the, the work energy theorem is, is pretty simple. Work changes energy. Now, really, that's kind of a, simple, a little bit overly simplified. Work changes the energy level of an object. Um, work is used to transfer energy to an object that allows that object then can use that energy to do work. And then when it does work, it transfers some of its energy to the next object. I mentioned this briefly with um, before in work. And this is the work and energy relationship. And, and this is why they are tied to one another. Um, I probably mentioned this before. Um, we talked about work, but it bears worth repeating. If there's no energy change, then no network was done on the object. Um, if we've done network and you know network was done, there has to be an energy change in the object or in the system. Um, we're going to look at two types of um, energy, two of the more common types that people might be familiar with. Um, and, and the first one is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is just as the name implies. Since kinetic means moving, it's the energy related to motion. It's kind of like momentum. Momentum is a quantity of motion. Well, so is kinetic energy. An object has kinetic energy because it's moving. Um, because it's another quantity of motion, this helps us understand a little bit better um, why kinetic energy and momentum are related, and in fact, they are related. Um, here's our equation for kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Um, <clears throat> even though the units, um, when you combine the, the mass and the v squared, gives you kilograms meter squared per second squared, that works out to be the same as a newton meter, which is a joule. The units for energy are joule, just like the units for work. Um, the big secret is, don't forget the velocity gets squared. That's a real powerful um, expression right here when we're squaring the velocity. A lot of people also sometimes forget this one-half factor. Um, let's look at a kinetic energy a little bit more. And basically, you can calculate kinetic energy. I can tell you it's the energy of motion. But, but here's, here's the deal. Here's what's going on. The kinetic energy of an object when it's moving is equal to the amount of work required to get it to that speed from rest. Okay, So if you kick a football, the football's at rest, it has no kinetic energy. If you kick it and it has 10 joules of kinetic energy, what that means is you put 10 joules of work into it. Another way of viewing kinetic energy is the amount of work that the object can do while being brought to rest such as when it hits something. So we throw a baseball. The baseball has 100 joules of kinetic energy, because we put 100 joules of work into throwing it. So it has 100 joules of kinetic energy. It can do 100 joules of work as it's coming to a stop. That's what the second part means. That's the real understanding that's critical with kinetic energy. Now, because of this, because of this relationship between kinetic energy and work, the work kinetic energy theorem was developed. Now, what that basically says is work is equal to the change of kinetic energy. If you put work into a system, that is equal to the system's change in kinetic energy. And don't forget, change of kinetic energy is just 1 half um, m final velocity squared 
um, minus one half m initial velocity squared. This is the object's final um, kinetic energy, and this is the initial kinetic energy. Change is final minus initial. The work, the net work, is positive if the speed of the object increases. That means energy was put into the object. If you put energy into it, it's going to go faster. It's going to have more kinetic energy. So the net work is positive. It's negative if the object slows down, meaning we took energy out of it. Remember, work is a scalar. However, we have positive and negative work, which indicates the direction of the energy flow, whether it's into the object, which is positive, or out of the object, which is negative. The change in kinetic energy is the work put into, or it's done by the object, based on its change in speed. So if we know the object's change in velocity, we can figure out how much work was either put into it, or that it did. Now, this is going to be a little derivation of the work kinetic energy theorem. If you, and I'm just kind of throwing it in, the, in here just to kind of um, show it for completeness. Um, for my class, um, I really don't care too much. If you, if you watch this part, you can fast forward to it. It's just here for your information. Basically, it starts with the idea that work is force times displacement. And from Newton's second law, we know force is equal to ma, so work is mad. <laughs> um, now, taking another kinematic equation, where we have our final velocity is equal to the square root of initial velocity squared, yada, 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 we could rearrange and rewrite this equation, squaring both sides, we get this expression right here, vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2ad. I'm going to rearrange that equation and solve for AD right here. And then I'm going to stick this term, this VF squared minus VI squared over 2, into the expression for AD, for work. And we get this lovely looking mass. And if I distribute the mass through, what I end up with is work is 1 half MVF squared minus 1 half MVI squared. Final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy equal to the change kinetic energy. Okay, here's a little practice problem. I'm not going to go through it here. I'm going to set it up and then just kind of give you the answer. You can. I suggest that you work it on own. Um, six kilogram cat, big cat, runs after a mouse at 10 meters per second. A big fast cat. What's the cat's kinetic energy? You work on that. You get 300 joules. Now, suppose this cat accelerated to the speed of 12 meters per second while chasing the mouse. And the question is, how much work was done on the cat to get this change in speed, to go from 10 meters per second to 12 meters per second? This is a good practice problem to do. You get 132 joules. I would make sure you get that answer. And if you don't, you're not squaring the velocities. Okay, the other type of energy is potential energy. This is a little bit, actually, in one sense easier, but in another sense it's a little, little bit more complicated than, um, than um, kinetic energy. Potential energy is stored energy. It's energy that's in the system, the object, that has the potential to be used for work. It doesn't have to be, it just has the potential to be used for work. That's why we call it potential energy. There's a lot of types of potential energy. Um, but the potential energy due to position, which is sometimes or many times known as gravitational potential energy, is the most common. This is the one we're going to be focusing in on. Although I'm not going to call it gravitational potential energy, I'm just going to call it potential energy. It really is gravitational potential energy. And here's the expression. Potential energy is mgh. Mass times acceleration due to gravity times the height. <clears throat> this is also known as gravitational potential energy. Um, and, and it's just basically due to the fact that you lifted something up. Height is how high up did you lift it. Now, I did mention there's other types of potential energy. Um, 
if it has energy stored up in it, it has the potential to do work. It doesn't really matter what, how that energy is stored. Um, other forms of potential energy to be familiar with. Um, garage door spring is elastic potential energy. Um, I know a lot of people get into that, get into Hooke's Law. I'm not going to. Um, that's a very common type of potential energy. Um, when we get into conservation of energy, uh, a lot of times this is included as mechanical energy. I'm not going to, simply because I just don't want to. Um, other forms of potential energy. Gasoline has chemical potential energy. Um, uranium has nuclear potential energy. A battery has electrical potential energy. So there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of energy stored up into um, atoms, if you want to say that, into the material, and that can be used to do work. And if it can be used to do work, then that's considered potential energy. Okay, that's all I really have for you. I just want to introduce these ideas of kinetic and potential energy. Um, and then later on, we're going to get into the idea of conservation of energy. Big idea. That's what a lot of the problems are based on.